Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle, and today we have with us Beth Bilo, who is the founder of The Introvert Entrepreneur. Welcome to the program, Beth. Hi, Mike. It's great to be here. So, of course, tell us a little bit about your background, what led you through your entrepreneurial journey, but I um, always love when we get, you know, interesting names for a, a company or a firm. So I love introvert entrepreneur because I think that a lot of people don't go into an entrepreneurial venture because they just feel like, well, I just am not right fill in the blank. So I, I love that. So give us a little, a little bit of background. Yeah. Um, well, it, like many entrepreneurs, mine is a long and winding road that probably didn't predict where I ended up. Um, but it's uh, I started out in, in music and arts administration. So doing a lot of nonprofit management. And um, it was there that I, I think I learned the business lessons that serve me well now, because there's so many parallels between um, running a successful nonprofit and running a successful business. But um, but it was my my role as a um, program officer at a grant making institution that led me into the consulting and coaching world that, um, you know, started putting a, a name on things that I had been doing naturally um, and that I had long been interested in. So when I had a chance to formalize that, I took it and went and uh, spent a year and a half becoming a certified coach. And it was during that that, um, you know, of course, you know, I think one of the keys to a successful business is being extremely clear on who you're serving, um, especially if you're an introvert. And it took a little bit of time to figure it out. But one day I, it was truly one of those light bulb moments when I realized, hey, I'm attracting a lot of introverts and I'm an introvert myself. And we have, you know, kind of unique um, challenges and opportunities in the entrepreneur space. And so I put my stake in the ground as the introvert entrepreneur and and never looked back um, and have enjoyed, you know, building a business that's built on coaching as well as speaking and podcasting and writing and, um, you know, where, whatever else I can do to help get the message out that introverts can be um, really powerful and strong entrepreneurs. I love that, and I love your tagline because success is an inside job um, because it really is that mindset. So mm-hmm. do you find that that's where you're starting, that that's uh, – the kind of person you're attracting to ask for your help is someone that feels like, you know, they're introverted or, you know, help me at least get, you know, momentum started. And then is one of the first things you're working on is that mindset or their, their outlook of what they, they can provide, right? Is that something that you're starting with or, or what? Yeah, often they're coming because they have just discovered that introversion is part of who they are. Like they've they've known for a while perhaps that they have a different perspective than other people, but they didn't necessarily put that label on it or that framework mm-hmm. on it. And once they put that framework, they want to explore that more. And a lot of that has to do with like, how, what is my brand of introversion? You know, how do I show up? Because there's not just one type of introvert, just like there's not one type of extrovert. Um, you know, they're all on the spectrum from I just want to hide behind my computer and not have to talk to anybody. Any, anybody all day, but still make money to, yeah, I'm willing to get out there and be seen and heard. I just want to be able to do it in a sustainable way. So, you know, that's often interesting. It, it's that awareness that they're trying to work on from the beginning. Yeah. And, and I think that one, you know, it's like the old saying, you don't know what you don't know, but once you know it now, it's like, oh, well, uh-huh. now that I know that I am this way and that I could do this and this and this within those confines of, you know, like, I think that you probably say this, I have no clue, but you know, hi, intro, uh, Mr. or Ms. Introvert, potential entrepreneur, please know that we're not going to change you and you're not going to be Tony Robbins, but we're going to have help you to work within, you know, how you're wired. And I think that's important too, right? You're not trying to, you know, rewire someone to now you look back and say, wow, I, you know, I'm going to force you to do things that you, you hate. Now, there might be elements of that, but I don't think you're trying to transform someone into something that someone that they're not. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the tagline for my book is amplify your strengths and create success on your own terms. And so both of those really sum it up. And, and I often talk about, you know, 
some people will come, especially introverts, and say, I need more confidence, um, especially when it comes to those more outward-facing activities that are involved in entrepreneurship. And I think it goes deeper than confidence. Confidence is that, that surface um, manifestation of what is actually really trust. Mm-hmm. and self-acceptance. And that goes to that success as an inside job. It's, it's about trusting what is true for you on your insides. And, um, and when you trust that, then that naturally starts to emanate as confidence mm-hmm. and enable you to do those outward-facing activities with a lot more ease. And do you find that, um, I know I've seen this, but I'm wondering, especially starting from the ground where many of your clients are, do you find that once you get them to that point and then they start, you know, putting not even one foot in front of the other, but, you know, like one toe there and then now a half a foot and then now they're starting to take a step and they're, you know, baby steps and they start seeing some um, uh, oh, results, let's say, you know, not massive overnight transformational in 10 seconds results, but, you know, hey, I did this and the world didn't, you know, come to an end. And, and then I did this that um, uh, Beth trained me on. And hey, the, I, I'm actually getting some things done. And here's some outcomes that we were hoping for. Do you find that they start gaining confidence just in the doing of it? And then that really helps their introvert. Maybe they're not full on introvert. Maybe they're just introvert with a little eye. And then just seeing those results that they're able to do more and more and more. And they still are going to be that introverted entrepreneur, but they're a little bit more confident about it because they see that things are happening for them. Yeah, I think one of the things that introverts, because we process internally, I mean, we haven't defined exactly what introvert is, but it has to do with where you get your energy and how you process information. And introverts will tend to get into their heads a lot and sit with the idea a lot. Um, That does not mean they don't take action, but sometimes they can get caught in that um, paralysis by analysis phenomenon. And they do learn that, you know, yes, it is important and honor that need to to really think thoroughly through something before you take action. But you do need, and that's where coaching comes in, of course, you know, that accountability and that kind of push to action so that you can start to start a feedback loop to find out, okay, are my thoughts on the right track? You know, is this going to show up the way I want it to? And by taking that action, like you said, it starts to build that confidence and that trust, and it allows you to build up some momentum over time. But sometimes we need that little push um, out the gate to take the thoughts and what's going on inside that feels so alive and rich um, just all by itself and make sure that we're taking that essential step to put it out there in the world. And and I would say that if someone listened back to that statement or had it transcribed and read through it, that they would nod their head and say, makes sense. You know, nothing, you know, you know, earth shattering about that statement. But I would also say that the problem with uh, that is many times we miss the forest for the trees because we're too close to the problem. We're myopic about our own self. So that is where I would suspect that coach um, would come in to where people would need someone like yourself to kind of, you know, do assessments and come in and then say, okay, now if I correct, if I'm wrong, but do you ever feel and do you ever do and do you ever, you know, react this way and, and, and feel this way? And, and I think someone needs that outside perspective to help them clarify and then take those steps to move forward. Is, is that what you've seen as well? Yeah, there's a little bit of, you know, I never talk about coaching in terms of cheerleading, <laughs> but there is definitely advocating and, and, um, and encouraging someone to take that action. I always, I do say that, you know, my job as a coach is to hold you to your, your highest self. And sometimes um, outsiders can see that highest self a little bit more clearly than, you know, we can ourselves. Um, because like you said, we're, we're way too close to it. So, so that is absolutely part of the equation of being able to say, you know, I'm going to serve as this mirror for you. And the mirror is reflecting back who you are at your absolute best and who you are, your absolute best can do this, <laughs> can yeah. take this action. Yeah. Neat. Sometimes people just need that little extra push and nudge. And then, mm-hmm. and, you know, like riding the bike with no training wheels at first, you know, feels a little shaky, but then it's like, Hey, I'm actually doing this. Thank you. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, what do you think is some conventional wisdom you believe does more harm than good when it comes to introverts kind of seeing and coming into their own and being successful? 
Well, we've started to touch on one of those, and that is this idea of comfort zones. Um, I have long felt that, uh, you know, there are so many expressions about, you know, get out of your comfort zone. Nothing good happens in your comfort zone. Um, If you're not on the edge, you're taking up too much space or go big or go back to bed. So I could go on and on with all of these different, um, what almost start to sound like admonishments. I know that they're meant to be motivational, but we've talked about this a little bit and you use that, you know, expression of saying like, it's not even one foot in front of the other. Sometimes it's, you know, dipping your toe in. And I believe that comfort zones are that place where sometimes we can be our best, um, that they can serve as a launching pad for what is next. And so if somebody is constantly getting these messages like push, 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 if you're not scared, you're not doing enough, sometimes I think we need to spend a little bit of that space or time in that space where we feel comfortable, where we feel confident, where we feel competent, and to really build up some evidence that says, I can do this. And and so I think it's okay to lean into your comfort zone for some things for a period of time so that you build up that evidence and therefore have the springboard to be able to start to stretch that comfort zone so that you, you know, add activities, add um, ideas that are, you know, stretching a little bit more that maybe, you know, cause the butterflies in your stomach or make you, you know, have a slight bit of dread because you don't know what's going to happen, you know, to have a a firm foundation before you start doing that and as you do it, it's going to help you to stretch in a more sustainable way. Um, So I believe that, you know, get out of your comfort zone, yes, and there is value to being able to honor some of those things that are in your comfort zone so that you can build on them and, you know, make progress based on a place that feels um, that you feel like you have your feet firmly planted on the ground. So that's, yeah, I, I, that's I, one that, you know, I, I say don't shame it, claim it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, just a little, you, little extra little twist on perspective of things changes the whole, you know, meaning. Uh, I, I, like, I love that a lot. You know, I like one of your recent <clears throat> blog posts, The Life-Changing Magic of Launching a Minimum mm-hmm. Viable Product. And I think that's so powerful for anybody, but especially for people that might be, you know, a little tentative. And yeah. so talk a little bit about what you've seen with clients you've worked with where they feel like, you know, the analysis of paralysis, I've got to get it perfect for a launch. And the fallacy there is you can get it to what you think is perfect, but then does your market think it's perfect? And then they don't respond to it. Whereas you could take that, you know, initial, you know, get it to where it's not a, an embarrassment of a product, but get it just minimum viable product and MVP we've read about and just kind of build and tweak and listen and, and learn from the users, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's that starting that feedback loop because in our heads, it's either perfect or it's a disaster or we just don't know, right? And and so once you put it out there, um, what I've experienced, you know, personally and what I've witnessed clients doing is say, okay, I've got this really great idea and I have this energy around it. It's not all fleshed out, you know, as a minimum viable product maybe isn't, um, but I need I have enough that I am at least – one or two or three steps ahead of where the market or my audience is going to be. And it's kind of that expression of, you know, building the plane while you're flying it, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's how I see it. And, and again, that goes back to making sure that you have that trust in yourself that like, I can handle this, I can do this, I have the, the competence and the skills to be able to adjust and respond to whatever feedback I'm getting from the market to be able to make this happen. So it, it helps us break through that analysis Paralysis, paralysis by just doing it, just doing it. And I've learned that if, for myself that I have an idea. If I don't, you know, like I, I will post something about it and say, this is coming or this is here. And I'll just throw up a web page and say, okay, go ahead, sign up. And then I'm like, okay, now what am I going to say? Yeah. But at least you started <laughs> and it. And, you know, it's kind of like, working. you know, uh, let's schedule that webinar for next Tuesday at 3 p.m. Exactly. And once it's on the books, exactly. it's like, ooh, now I better prepare what I should say. <laughs> I better do it. I better do it. Exactly. Because yep. You know, depending on the kind of business you have and, and the people that I tend to attract and um, are, are kind of like me where we're, we're primarily solopreneurs. You know, we've got perhaps a team of people that help us with different tasks, but we don't have employees and we're accountable to ourselves more than anything else. Um, you know, we have accountability to a community, but that community, unless we're out there, you know, telling them every thought that crosses our minds, they don't know that I'm thinking about a webinar next week. And so it's easy from day to day to just say, oh, 
well, you know, maybe I'll do it the next week or maybe I'll do it the week after that, you know, because nobody knows about it. So what's the difference, right? Um, and I hope I'm, <laughs> I'm not revealing anything that other people have not experienced. Um, but, you know, we, by, by going ahead and putting it out there, you're putting that stake in the ground and, and helping other people hold you accountable. So it's, it's establishing something that's going to help you keep I, I, moving. Yeah. I think that, that is just a huge piece that people miss out on because, you know, <clears throat> let, let, I, I would think that that's one of the biggest elements why people don't achieve the goals they set or the resolutions mm-hmm. is because they know that they've silently made it. And eh, if I don't do it, only I know. And exactly. I think that, you know, even with some business development things, whatever we, we talked about, a you know, web, webinar, but it could be anything. It could mm-hmm. be, um, you know, going to a, um, let's just say a local uh, networking event, after hours, mm-hmm. you know, networking event. Those sometimes can be daunting, but guess what could be one way that you can overcome that. Sign up to go. Okay, great. Then find a, you know, whatever you want to call it, but a networking buddy. Get someone yeah. else to go with you that would need to be there and then go, and then you're holding them accountable. They're holding you accountable and then go and have a game with it, right? Go, hey, yeah. let's see. I'm going to see if I can find one person that you need to talk to here in this room and you do the same for me because isn't it the easiest thing in the world to go, oh, you need to talk to Bill over here. He's got it all. But yet, if you're trying to sell your stuff, or introduce your thing, it's like, ooh, I'm, I'm kind of... So, I mean, I think some of those little things can help kind of get that momentum. I think that's a, a really great point you make. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, and, and that's one thing to remember is that it's often the little things. Mm-hmm. It's not something huge. It's not big grand gestures. It's not, um, you know, jumping off the cliff every time. It is often, you know, the success is coming by those little tiny decisions that you make every day to put that, you know, toe in the water or take one step forward. Um, Those are the things that add up over time that make the biggest difference. You know, um, one of your recent podcasts was on, you know, uh, it's called Leadership Story Lab, and it made me think of something that is really hot in marketing today, um, which is story selling, storytelling. So telling your story, becoming that attractive character, you know, having that foundation of someone being able to relate <clears throat> to yourself, your story, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's tips and techniques and ways to do all this, but I think when it gets down to it is I think that some people that you have worked with that are attracted to your brand, the introvert entrepreneur, there could be some extra resistance there where they're like, oh, I don't know, I don't I don't know if I have a story, and even if I did, I don't know that I want to tell it or would tell it the right way. Have you found some of those things, and how do you help people overcome that? I have, and it's, it's fascinating because I'm actually working on a presentation about that right now, about oh, um, vulnerability, <laughs> vulnerability and authenticity and telling your story yeah. and how do, you, um, how do you weave that in in a really authentic way to how you're presenting yourself because you're not going to achieve resonance with the people that you want to be serving unless you reveal something of yourself. And again, for introverts, and, and I'm generalizing here because – Again, there's a, there's a whole spectrum. But in general, we tend to be somewhat private people. And it, sometimes that privacy can lead us to thinking, like, my story is not unique. Like, we forget because we're – it's like the fish swimming in water doesn't know it's in water. Yeah. Um, we, we lose touch with the things that are unique or special um, about us. that, And we don't realize that if we revealed that or, or shared that with other people, that they would say, oh, my gosh – me too. You know, that's, I'm I'm always kind of looking for that, you know, what's the me too moment? Because that's where there's an intersection that is real. And and I think people are really craving that introvert, extrovert, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We, we want to find people who, um, with whom we can say, oh my gosh, me too. And it helps us to feel less alone. And, and even though we are, you know, more, and I'm sure I'm certainly not the first person to say this, you know, we are more connected than ever when it comes to social media and mm. other ways of reaching out to each other. And yet we are very disconnected because all of that, that outward facing um, promotion and, and storytelling, it's, um, there's a great quote that says, um, one of the reasons we suffer from insecurity is because we compare our behind the scenes with other people's highlight reel. Mm. And I think Ooh, that's really good. Perfect. Yeah, isn't that awesome? And, and, because and you tend to only tell the good stuff on the social media right. platforms. 
And so other people right. just see that, and it's like, <clears throat> well, how about the, the the time you go see a movie, and it's like, wow, all the previews were the best parts of the whole movie, and it's kind of the <laughs> same concept. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we have to remember that, you know, every story we have, you know, every person has a unique story. Everybody has something special to share. It's your experience. No one else has had your life. And so that gives you, um, you know, it gives you that credibility to tell your story. And your story is not going to be the same as anyone else's, but you are going to have those intersections, and that's the chance to make those connections. So it's worth taking a step forward and, and risking a little bit of vulnerability in order yeah. to open up those Huge. connections. Well, whether you feel like you're an introvert or not, I think that some of the things we've talked about today can help anyone in their business, in their personal growth. So I know you have a podcast and a book and more. So what is the best way for people to uh, reach out and connect with you? Well, the hub of all the information is on my website at theintrovertentrepreneur.com. The book is called The Introvert Entrepreneur, Amplify Your Strengths and Create Success on Your Own Terms. The podcast is The Introvert Entrepreneur, and um, I'm publishing roughly, you know, twice a month and interviews with um, both prominent and -and up-and-coming introvert entrepreneurs, and there are mm, 155 episodes, so it's got plenty of archives to go Mm. through if if you're new to the podcast. And um, and then on social media, one of the best places to connect is Facebook. So you can just search for the Introvert Entrepreneur on Facebook and find our community there. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. It was really great uh, getting to know you, Beth, and learning more about your business. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much, Mike. It was a pleasure. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.